WWDC 2014 has been one full of surprises. From iOS to macOS 10, there is a lot to play around. One of the most amazing news comes in the flavor of the brand new language called Swift and the ability in Xcode 6 to play with it in a simple and accessible way. This is called Xcode Playground. With this new feature, it is super easy to write and test code without having to create a new project every time. I've been developing for a decade and each and every machine I got had at least one folder called tests. And let me tell you, it has nothing to do with TDD. The idea of Playground is not new, especially looking at the world of web development where there are several projects where you can fiddle with HTML, JavaScript and CSS and see the results straight away. The ability to write some test code is only one of the interesting features of Playground. Far more intriguing is the ability to write documentations that contain some example code that can be run and changed on the spot. As I see it, every GitHub Swift project in the future will have a readme file as well as a playground one. This was the first intent when I wrote Markdown to Playground, a utility written in Swift, to convert Markdown files to playground documentations. A playground is a bundle directory which contains all the files that are needed for running the playground itself. Specifically, you can find the Swift file containing the source code you want to play with, the documentation folder that contains the HTML and the CSS files that are rendered in between the Swift source code. The HTML files contains not only the tags of the context section, but full pages representation. So even if there is only a single title on top of your Swift code, that would be encapsulated inside a full, simple HTML page comprising of an HTML and body tag as well as an head one. It is possible to play with the CSS but Xcode seems to behave nicely while following the HTML template on the Apple Playground example. The contents.xc playground is an XML file format containing the reference and the order of all of the pieces of documentation and Swift code that have to be rendered on the playground. The SDK is either macOS 10 or iPhone Simulator. The timeline.xc timeline file is not present at the beginning nor it is referenced on the contents file. It will appear as soon as the playground gets modified by writing code into it. As a result of playing with pieces of code on the playground, the Swift file will be duplicated and a reference to the original file kept. With Xcode Beta 5, the ability to import your classes into a playground has become possible. The process for making this work is fairly easy. It's only a matter of creating a Cocoa Touch framework with your classes in it. Build and run on an iPhone 5S simulator and then incorporate both the framework project and the playground inside the same workspace. The reason for the iPhone 5S is because a 64-bit version of the framework is required by the playground in order to be used. So this is playground, a technology on its infancy as it is Swift, the language it advertises. Since beta 1, Apple has been fixing many bugs and the experience of working with playgrounds is getting better and better. There is no doubt that this will become a main feature of Xcode, as well as being a good entry point for developers of all levels. <laughs>